Ayan, so, hello sa lahat. Yung topic natin for today ay homosexuality in the Levitical Law. So, this is our third topic for our series entitled, Can You Be Gay and Christian? So, yung current series natin, ang aim is to equip us on how to address ang issues related sa homosexuality. Today, we will talk about the argument of some progressives na nagsabi na hindi nag-apply sa Christians ang prohibition ng homosexual na intercourse sa Leviticus. Dahil, many prohibitions sa Leviticus ay hindi na sinusunod ng Christians dahil Christ is the fulfillment of the law. So, to start, yung argument ng mga tao hold this view is the prohibitions against homosexual practice no longer applies to us in the present because homosexual practice in Israel is part of the ceremonial law and Christ has already fulfilled the law. Isang kilalang gay theologian who will this view is si Matthew Vines. Ang sabi niya sa talk niya entitled The Gay Debate, The Bible and the Homosexuality I quote, Well, the Viticus calls it an abomination and if what And if it was an abomination then, then it certainly can't be a good thing now. The term abomination is applied to a very broad range of things in the old law, eating shellfish in Leviticus 11, eating rabbit or pork in Deuteronomy 14. These are all called abominations. If I just said, sex during a woman's menstrual period is also called an abomination. The term abomination is primarily used in the Old Testament to distinguish practices that are common to foreign nations from those that are distinctly Israelite. This is why Genesis 43, 32 says that for the Egyptians to eat with the Hebrews would be an abomination to the Egyptians. And why Exodus 8, 26 says that for the Israelites to make sacrifices near the Pharaoh's palace would be an abomination to the Egyptians. There is nothing wrong with the Israelite sacrifices, of course. The problem with both of these things Is that, is that they would blur the lines between practices that are specifically Israelite and those that are foreign. The nature of the term abomination in the Old Testament is intentionally culturally specific. It defines religious and cultural boundaries between Israel and other nations. But it's not a statement about what is intrinsically good or bad, right or wrong. And that's why numerous things that it's applied to in the Old Testament have long been accepted parts of Christian life and practice, end quote. Basically, yung argument dito ni Vines is that ang prohibition sa Leviticus does not show na mali ang act in itself. Kaya bawal, kaya bawal hindi dahil intrinsically sinful ang act. Pero, ang purpose is to show Israel as distinct among the other nations. Also, dahil ang word na abomination ay nag-apply din sa other things na hindi naman considered as sinful in itself, tulad ng pagkain ng shellfish, then in the same way na Christians do things now na prohibited before in the Old Testament, ay ganun din dapat ang response natin sa homosexual na practice. To add, sabi ni Matthew Vines naman sa video niya na entitled God and the Gay Christian, The Biblical Case in support of same-sex relationships na ang mga practices na ito sa Leviticus ay part ng Old Testament law code which was already fulfilled by Jesus. He cited Hebrews 8.13 to say na ang old law is obsolete and aging. And the Romans 10.4 to say that Christ is the end of the law. And for this reason, ay hindi rao nasettle ng Old Testament ang issue sa homosexuality for Christian. Now, if This argument is true na si Christ being the fulfillment ng law should let people encourage homosexual monogamous relationships. Then this shows na traditional Christians have used the Bible for their homophobic na prejudices. So ano ba ang facts of the matter sa issue na ito? What I'll argue is the prohibitions against homosexual practice still applies to us in the present because though Christ has already fulfilled the law, homosexual practice in Israel is actually part of the moral law. What I'll do to establish this is to discuss Leviticus 18 in context. Then though hindi na sama sa slides after that, I, I will discuss yung Hebrew word na toeva. So, dun muna tayo sa Leviticus 18 in context. 
Now, the Lonnie Moses ay may 613 na laws and they are divided to three. Ito ay ang Mishpatim or yung moral law which are laws ni God na based sa nature niya and is therefore unchanging. Ang Hukim or Chuka or ceremonial law which means custom ng nation. Pasok dito yung practices na sinasabi ni Matthew Vines na commanded by God to show na distinct ang Israel compared sa other nations, which include ang feasts and festivals and ang dietary and closing restrictions. Meron ding judicial or civil law, which are laws na specifically given sa culture ng Israelites. In terms of kung ano ba ang gagawin nila in case may specific instance or violation na nangyari. Like if may nangyari na murder or if pinatay ng isang ox ang tao. Now, what I'll do basically is to prove ng statement sa Leviticus 18.22 where it said, uh, do not have sexual relations with the man as one does with the woman that is detestable is part of the moral law. So let's proceed to discuss ang context to establish this. Now, ang Leviticus 18 is a chapter na nag-discuss about unlawful na sexual relations. Ang passage started with God's command to Moses to tell Israelites not to do as the Egyptian and the, as the Canaanite does. Ang sabi sa verse 1 to 5 ay, quote, The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, I am the Lord your God. You must, you must not do as they do in Egypt where you used to live. And you must not do as they do in the land of Canaan where I am bringing you. Do not follow, follow their practices. You must obey my laws and be careful to follow my decrees. I am the Lord your God. Keep my decrees and laws, for the person who obeys them will live by them. I am the Lord. End quote. Yung pwedeng rebuttal dito nila is that kaya hindi raw nila gagayahin ang ibang nations kasi set apart daw sila as Israelites. It's true na set apart sila as Israelites. Pero ang commandment ni God clearly shows na intrinsically sinful ang sexual relations with the same sex as is explicitly stated by Leviticus 18.22. If you read kasi sa latter part ng chapter, sa verse 24 to 28 ay sabi, Do not defile yourselves in any of these ways. Because this is how the nations that I'm going to drive you out, I, that I'm going to drive out before you became defiled. Even the land was defiled, so I punished it for its sin, and the land vomited out its inhabitants. But you must keep my decrees and my laws. The native-born and the foreigners residing among you must not do any of these detestable things, for all these things were done by the people who lived in the land before you. And the land became defiled. And if you defile the land, it will vomit you out as it vomited out the nations that were before you. So dito, yung tinutukoy na do not defile yourselves in any of these ways includes ang homosexual relations. Ang sabi rin ng other nations are driven out kasi they practice this sin. Also, ang foreigners na nag sa Israel ay bawal din gawin ang detestable na practices na ito which made the land defiled. Dahil punished ang other nations for committing ang sin na ito, then we have good reasons to believe na part ito ng moral law and not ng ceremonial law na hindi lang siya culture-specific for a command na nag-transcend ng time and culture. Furthermore, let's say na for the sake of argument, ay part nga ang command against homosexual relations sa ceremonial law, which is listed from Leviticus 18. Then this is problematic for the progressive hermeneutic kasi kasama sa listed na sins na ginagawa ng other nations na pinagbabawal ni Lord ay ang child sacrifice, bestiality, adultery, and incest. Would we say na dahil si Christ is the fulfillment of the law ay pwede na rin gawin yung mga yun? Obviously not. To add, let me quote an insight from the world's foremost authority sa Bible and homosexuality, si Professor Robert Gagnon, to show clearly na against ang Leviticus 18 sa lahat ng homosexual intercourse. Ang first night ay from his open letter entitled, Does Leviticus Only Condemn Idolatrous Homosexual Practice? However, male cult prostitution was not the only context in which homosexual intercourse manifested itself in the ancient Near East generally. It was merely the most acceptable context for homosexual intercourse to be practiced in Mesopotamia, 
certainly for those who played the role of the receptive partner. In our own cultural context, we think that the banning of male cult prostitution does not take into account consensual, non-cultic, loving, homosexual relationships. In the cultural context of the ancient Near East, the reasoning has to be reversed. To ban homosexual cult prostitutes was to ban all homosexual intercourse. In any case, the authors of Leviticus 18.22 could have formulated the law more precisely by making specific reference to the Kedeshim, or the consecrated ones, an ironic reference to these cult figures. If it had been their intent to limit the law's application, that they did not do so suggests that they had a broader application in mind. Moreover, the Levitical rejection of same-sex intercourse depends on Canaanite practices for its validity about as much as the rejection of incest, adultery, and bestiality, end quote. So, ngayon, na, na-discuss na natin yung Leviticus 18 in context, let's now proceed naman in talking about the Hebrew word hueva. Old Testament law, it's clear that the one who made the objection is not familiar with the divisions of the Mosaic law. Mayroon kasing civil law na nawala after ng Jewish theocracy. Ang ceremonial law na nawala dahil sa fulfillment ng work ni Christ as priest and ang moral law na nag-continue pa rin. Let's examine ang objection about wearing clothing na may mixed fabrics and also yung pagkain ng sea creatures na walang fins and scales. The objection na bawal tayo magsuot ng clothing na woven sa two kinds of material na makikita natin sa Leviticus 19, we can see written sa verses 1 to 2, And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Holiness means na set apart. And though may aspects ng moral law sa passages, there are aspects ng ceremonial law which is meant to show that Israel must be set apart among the nations, which includes their agricultural practice and their closings of verse 19. Tapos, So Leviticus 11.10 naman na passage na may kinalaman sa seafood, we could see sa verse 1 to 2, And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying to them, Speak to the people of Israel, saying, These are the living things that you may eat among all the animals that are on the earth. This means na ang command na ito ay specific lamang for Israel as a nation na set apart for the Lord. This makes sense in light of Acts 10.9.28. 9 to 28, kung saan tinanggal ang restrictions in light of Peter's vision. Homosexuality naman makikita sa Leviticus 18.22 ay sabi, you shall not lie with the male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Ang difference nito sa previous passages na mentioned natin ay when God talked about unlawful sexual relations, God did not talk as if it only pertains to Israel. So verse 3 ay sabi, you shall not do as they do in the land of Egypt where you live. And you shall not do as they do in the land of Canaan to which I am bringing you. You shall not walk in their statutes. Verses 24 to 30. Do not make yourselves unclean by any of these things. For by all these, the nations I am driving out before you have become unclean. So that I punished its iniquity. And the land vomited out its inhabitants. But you shall keep my statutes and my rules and do none of these abominations. Either the native or the stranger who sojourns among you, for the people of the land who were before you, did all of these abominations so that the land became unclean. Lest the land vomit you out when you make it unclean, as it vomited out the nation that was before you. For everyone who does any of these abominations, the persons who do them shall be cut off from among their people. So keep my charge never to practice any of these abominable customs that were practiced before you, never to make yourselves unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. In light of the above passages in Leviticus 18, pwede natin makonclude na lahat ng unlawful sexual relations na binanggit ng Diyos ay sinful against Him, regardless kung saan nation ka kabilang. Ito ay dahil ang mga unlawful na relasyon na ito ang dahilan kung bakit ni God papaalisin ang mga nation na ito. Pinarusahan sila dahil sa kanilang defilement. Ang law na ito, therefore, ay hindi lang for Israelites but for the world, kung saan kasamang homosexuality sa cause ng defilement. I'll mention ulit Leviticus 18.22 for emphasis. 
you shall not lie with the male as with a woman, is an abomination. The word abomination there is the Hebrew noun toeva, which means detestable and abhorrent. Hindi siya merely taboo, as some gay Christians would say. Hey, Dr. Michael Brown cited uh, the authoritative Quiller Bumgartner Hebrew and the Aramaic lexicon of the Old Testament to show this further. Based sa work na yun, ay ang phrase na the abhorrent customs sa Leviticus 18 refers to abhorrent customs of the Canaanites, by which is meant in particular sexual perversity. Dr. Brown said na in light of that, ay it speaks certainly of moral violation. Dr. Brown added pa nga na if we look sa Deuteronomy 12.31, ang toe vay nag-refer sa child sacrifice. Sa Deuteronomy 7.26 ay sa adultery. Sorry, I, I mean sa idolatry. And sa Deuteronomy 25.15 to 16 ay nag-refer siya sa dishonest na weights and measures. So it's clear na moral infraction sa mga ito. He also commented regarding Ezekiel 16.50 about the word na toiva. So yung sabi sa passage na yun, sa verses 49 to 50. Cool. This was the guilt of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters had pride, excess of food, and prosperous ease, but did not eat the poor and needy. They were haughty and did an abomination before me. End quote. He said, na clear na nag-refer ang toy ba dito on ethical vi- violations, or else ay nag-refer ito sa homosexual promiscuity sa Genesis 19, kung saan ang men ng town ay nag-attempt na i-gang rape ang two men na nag-visit kay Lot, kung saan ang prophet describes this as the final outrage that broke the camel's back or ang culmination ng sins ng Sodom. Sobrang abhorrent and detestable ang widespread na homosexual practice sa kanila that God said sa Ezekiel 16.50, So I removed them when I saw it. Those who try to downplay ang meaning ng toeva by saying na ritual na tabus lang ang mga ito, which are cultural, would find it difficult to justify ang interpretation. Just that they would not stay na culturally tabu lamang yung child sacrifice and dishonest no weights and measures, which the word toiva also refers to. For this reason, I clear na nag-refer ito sa mga moral na violations. Now, important for us to discuss this kasi it seems na on some people, ay Christianity portrays a God na backwards ang sinking. Kung bagay, ginagamit ang religion for people to continue sa kanilang backward na sinking. They equate this to professing Christians sa U.S. who use the Bible to justify slavery. And today, I will see slavery as an evil and that equal ang lahat ng tao, which is an improvement. And this makes Christianity to them not appealing as a religion. Of course, who would want to believe in a religion of backwards and sinking? Though it's true and unfortunate na may professing Christians who use the Bible to justify slavery historically, And though may mga professing Christians who indeed use the Bible to demonize or mock people who identify as LGBT, which I believe is sinful in God's sight, that this treats them as people contrary to nature nila na made in the image of God. I would say na it does not follow na progressive na view na accepted na homosexuality for New Testament Christians ay helpful for people who want to follow God. This is because as much as we want to progress in our thinking, we can only truly really have progress if ang perspective natin ay nag-conform objectively sa truth. This begs the question, what is truth? Now, truth is defined as a proposition and a correspond to reality. And it is characterized as discovered and not invented. Like ng existence ng atom ay andun na before we became aware ng existence nun ng truth ay transcultural, which means na ito ay true for all people at all times and in all places, like 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. Like, pagkat nasa Philippines tayo, hindi naman iba yung rules ng math sa India, let's say, na yung truth ay unchanging, na independent ito from our beliefs. It is truth kahit we do not believe it, na kahit sincere tayo to believe na ang poison ay medicine, ay may mag-poison pa rin tayo nito. Nang truth ay hindi nagdepend sa attitude ng tao. So if masama akong tao, I, this does not make the truth I say as a lie. Kung pumabait ako, I, this does not make the lie I share as the truth. And that untruth ay absolute. 
And of course, seeing truth is not merely a proposition, but truth is a person. Sabi nga si John 14.6, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This shows na si God mismo yung truth. Sabi pa nga si John 1.14, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This shows na anyone who would go against God is not living in conformity to truth. Now, since God is truth, then everything that God says is truth. And since the Bible is God's word, I everything that the Bible says is true. We were able to show now homosexual relations is still prohibited for New Testament Christians. And in light of this, syempre, I would want to discuss bakit good news is for everyone, if for people who disagree with our view, ang fact that Christ is the fulfillment of the law. Now, before we discuss by good news na Christ is the fulfillment ng, ng law, let us discuss muna what it means. So Matthew 5:17 to 18 ay sabi, Do not think that I have come to abolish the Lord, the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Sa ibang translations ay sabi, not an iota, not a dot, or jot and tittle, which refers to the smallest na letter ng Hebrew na yod, which is half a letter, and the small mark ng Hebrew letter na parang crossing ng letter T or tail ng letter Y. This emphasizes na walang part ng law ang binabago or pinapawalang bahala ni Christ. This means na ang buong testament is something that Christ would fulfill. Na imbes na palitan ito ay he will establish ang intent and purpose nito sa kanyang teaching and sa pag-accomplish nito sa kanyang obedience. Ang example ng fulfillment ni Jesus sa prophets ay ang pag-fulfill ng prophecies about him when he came. Sa law naman ay ang pag-teach niya about it. And also sa mismong pagsunod ni Christ sa law. Ang, ang magandang summary about sa fulfillment ni Christ ng law ay makikita sa chapter 19 ng Westminster Confession of Faith. Beside the law, beside this law, commonly called moral, God was pleased to give to the people of Israel as a church under age ceremonial laws containing several typical ordinances, partly of worship, prefiguring Christ, His graces, actions, sufferings, and benefits, and partly holding forth diverse instructions of moral duties. All which ceremonial laws are now abrogated under the New Testament. To them also, as a body politic, he gave sundry judicial laws, which expired together with the state of that people, not obliging any other now, further than the general equity thereof may require. The moral law does forever bind all, as well justified persons as others, to the obedience thereof, and that not only in regard of the matter contained in it, but also in respect of the authority of God the Creator who gave it. Neither does Christ in the gospel anyway dissolve, but much strengthen this obligation. End quote. So dahil ang ceremonial law ay fulfilled in Christ, ay ang Christians sa New Testament no longer need to obey ang laws ng Jews about what is clean and unclean. We can be free to wear ang clothing na may mixed fabric. We can eat pork and shellfish. And we no longer need to offer animal sacrifices. Ang mga laws na ito ay shadows lamang which points to Christ. If once a year ay pwede lang makapasok ang high priest sa most holy place for the Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur, kung saan ay nag-sacrifice siya ng bull for his own sins and for his family, and where two goats are brought, one as a sacrifice and one as a scapegoat for the forgiveness of sins for another year, we now have a great high priest in Christ who sacrificed his life once and for all for our salvation. Ang civil or judicial law ay fulfilled din in Christ. This is why limited lang sa context ng Jewish theocracy ang application nito. Ang moral law ay fulfilled din ni Christ sa pag niya nito perfectly, though ito ay something na required pa rin tayo to obey as Christian. This is beautiful for us sinners. Let me explain. Ang salvation kasi, if it is up to us, we can never be saved. 
Ang standard ni God for salvation is perfection. And we know that we can never be good enough because of our depravity. But praise God na ang salvation is up to Him. Because Christ fulfilled the law by obeying everything perfectly. And now the Bible says, ng righteousness ni Christ ay credited to those who believe. The may assurance tayo na we are righteous in the sight of God because of what Christ did on the cross. This is God's guarantee to any sinner na mag-trust kay Christ. In light of this discussion and Christ being the fulfillment ng law, of course, this does not mean na walang use ng law for us as Christians. John Calvin talks about the three uses of the law, which I'll enumerate and explain briefly. The first function is for it to be a mirror na mag-reflect ng righteousness ni God and ng sinfulness natin. Ang purpose ng law kasi is to give us a knowledge of our sinfulness para makita natin na we need Christ for our salvation. Ang law nga, sabi si Galatians 3.14 is a guardian or a schoolmaster na nag sa atin kay Christ. Ang second function is ang civil use which is to restrain evil. Dong law kasi hindi binabago ang heart natin, ang threats nito of judgment or punishment ay nakakatulong to inhibit ang lawlessness ng tao. This establishes civil order and protects the righteous from the unrighteous. Ang third function naman ng law is to guide ang regenerate sa good works na plan ni God sa kanila. Ang mga Christians, which are people na under the law of Christ, should then follow everything that God has commanded us in His Word. Naalala ko rito yung psalmist sa Psalm 119, 97, where he said, Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. So ngayon, uh, na-discuss na natin yung uses ng law. And tayo mga Christians, because of the power of God, they feed na ni God to be able to freely obey His Word. God's grace empowers us for this. And if we send Idel, fulfilled ni Christ ang law, ay we can freely come to Him as our great high priest for our forgiveness. And if we do not know Christ, the law, sh- the law shows the sinner's tayo. Now we have violated the commandments of God, either sa deed or sa motivation ng ating hearts. This shows na need natin si Christ. And Christ died for sinners like us. So I urge you to come to Him. You will find rest in Christ. Only He can change you and solve our problems na experience natin because of our sins. So please come to Him. In summary, I readdressed the arguments of those who believe na hindi na sin ang homosexuality sa New Testament dahil Christ has fulfilled the law. We did this by answering in context on Leviticus 18 to show na hindi part ng ceremonial ang homosexual practice but part ng moral law. We discussed din yung meaning ng Hebrew word na toeva. We also discussed the nature ng truth and that si God mismo ang truth. We also expounded on the meaning of Christ being the fulfillment ng law to show how it's beautiful for all of us sinners in light of the gospel. And we discussed na may use pa ng law for us Christians kahit fulfilled na ni Christ ang law. So, ayun, uh, tapos na tayo and we can now proceed sa Q&A.